Hey everyone, my name's Jessie. Welcome back to my channel. I have heard your feedback, I've seen the comments, and I'm happy to report that I got a microphone. So hopefully my audio is way better from now on and you guys can hear me okay. Please let me know if you can hear a difference and if this does help at all. So today we are doing a massive sci-fi fantasy book haul. I don't have an explanation for why I decided to buy this many books during quarantine. I, I have no words. I can't justify it in any way except that it makes me happy. So buckle in, grab some coffee or tea, and let's talk about books. The first book I won't talk about too too much because it is the book club pick for my sci-fi fantasy book club for the month of June. If you want to join us, I have all of the information for my book club linked down below, and that is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. You will have to wait and see my thoughts on this one during our live show with Books with Brittany. Uh, that is June 28th at 7 p.m. Central Time. So if you want to chat with us, if you've read this book before and you want to see our thoughts and want to talk about it, please join us. The next book I hauled, I'm not going to talk about at length at all because I already have a full review of it down below. Uh, and that is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Everyone knows what this is about. If you want to know my thoughts, check out that review. This was not it. This was not it for me. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> the next couple of books are all of the sci-fi books that I've gotten. So the first being The Gone World by Tom Sweaterlich. 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 I have not heard anyone talk about this, but I, I don't know how I found it on Goodreads. The blurb for it said that it was Inception meets True Detective, which season one of True Detective, if you have not watched that show, season one is unbelievable. Season two, don't worry about watching that one, but season one, so, so good. And then Inception, great movie. So I was immediately intrigued. And then you've got people saying it is a mind-blowing fusion of science fiction, thriller, existential horror in apocalyptic fiction. What is this book? And then Blake Crouch blurbed it on the front and said, I promise you have never read a story like this. <sighs> okay, well, we will see Blake Crouch. We will see. The next one I feel like is the quintessential sci-fi series that I just really need to get to because everyone seems to really enjoy it. And that is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. Uh, I want to make sure you can see his name okay. I know it's pretty small on this cover. James S.A. Corey. There you go. So teeny. This is the first book in the Expanse series. And I've just heard really, really good things. I know that there's a TV show based on this series. So I'm really, really excited to get to it. I have been really enjoying sci-fi recently and I just read my first space opera, A Memory Called Empire, and really, really loved it. So I'm really excited to get around to this. The next book I have is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This is the first in a series of novellas about this character called Murderbot who was built to destroy people and instead he just wants to kick back on the couch and drink beers or something. I don't know. Everyone seems to love this series and everyone talks about how funny and witty Murderbot is as a character. I love that trope of like these powerful beings not wanting to bother and just wanting to like live life and relax. So I'm really excited to read these and they're super teeny. So I feel like I can get through this really quickly and then I'm really, really going to enjoy the character of Murderbot. The next book I have is Wild Seed by Octavia Butler. Octavia Butler, if you haven't heard of her, I think she's the quintessential sci-fi author, one of the most iconic sci-fi authors out there. Wild Seed is apparently about these two conflicting powerful entities. They're kind of like opposing forces in the world and they kind of collide and clash and have to come together, I think. It sounded so intriguing. It says that there's this ancient spirit with boundless powers named Doro who possesses humans, killing without remorse as he jumps from body to body to sustain his own life. He fears no one until he meets Anyanwu. Anyanwu is an entity like Doro and yet different. She can heal with a bite and transform her own body, mending injuries and reversing aging. No one poses a true threat to Anyanwu until she meets Doro. So I, I just think this sounds 
really, really cool. And I really want to get around to reading Octavia Butler. So I felt like this was a good place to start, but definitely won't be my last Octavia Butler book. So let me know which one your favorite is down in the comments below so I know which one to pick up after this. And then the last kind of sci-fi e book that I got was More Than This by Patrick Ness. I read the Chaos Walking trilogy and was obsessed with it, you guys. It is such an underrated series. It's right there. The Knife of Never Letting Go is the first one. It's so good. Please, please pick it up. It's super weird and the writing style is very different, but I promise it's such a good series. It's so underrated. So I was really excited to pick up something else by Patrick Ness and this little cover is so cute and clever. <laughs> uh, this one sounded really interesting because it sounds like it's uh, more of like a contemporary with a sci-fi twist. It says it's about this boy named Seth who drowns desperate and alone, but then he wakes and he's alive. How is that possible? And so it sounds like he has this near-death experience, but then comes back different, which reminds me of Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which is like one of my favorite books ever. Um, so I'm really intrigued about this. I really like this trope of like near-death experiences and coming back with like a different power or mindset. I don't know. I'm really intrigued and I love Patrick Ness. A Monster Calls is another one I read that just made me sob. Oh my lord. So I really have enjoyed everything I've read by him so far, so I'm excited to give this a try. Speaking of Patrick Ness, I also picked up his newest book, Burn, and was planning on reading it this month. Hopefully I can stay on track to do that. I've been really behind on my reading, but this one apparently is like this alternate reality to our own where dragons are just like a thing and I think it takes place in like the 1950s yeah 1957 it says I'm really intrigued by this I'm just gonna read you guys this really short blurb on a cold Sunday evening in early 1957 the very day in fact that Dwight David Eisenhower took the oath of office for the second time as president Sarah Dewhurst waited with her father in the parking lot of the Chevron gas station for the dragon he'd hired to help on the farm what what is this book? I am so intrigued. Patrick Ness, dragons. Yes, give it to me. The next book I have was so kindly sent to me by the author and Thank you so much, Erin, for sending me this. It is Sunborn Rising by Erin Safranoff. So this book is the first, I believe, in a series that is a fantasy series. And what's so special about this book is it has a ton of full color illustrations throughout the entire book. Like, look at, look at this art, you guys. Oh, <laughs> it is stunning. This is one of the most beautiful books I own. It is gorgeous. I'm gonna read to you guys what this one is about. It's about Bara, a young willful Lisselspur, finds her late father's hidden journal and reads about the old world and the mysterious plague her father believed destroyed it. He wrote that he warned the elders. He urged them to take action. Those were his last words. Together with her two best friends, Bara will explore every bark, wood, and leaf of the great forest to relight her world and complete her father's story, even if she has to travel beneath the fall. So intriguing. I can't wait to read this book. He even sent me all these adorable little stickers and a bookmark. And look how cute this character is. I believe this is the main character, Bara. I am obsessed with that character design, so I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. Not only is it beautifully illustrated, it also has a book trailer and an entire soundtrack that was composed for this book. I'm gonna link all of that down below so that you guys can check this out for yourself, but I am so impressed. First impression, I am just blown away by the amount of love and effort that went into this book so i can't wait to read it thank you so much erin for passing this my way let's talk about a couple sequels that i got so the first being the blinding knife by brent weeks i loved loved the black prism by brent weeks it is 
definitely one of my favorite fantasies that I've read so far. I'm so excited to continue on with the series. People keep telling me that the second book is even better than the first and I'm like how? So I can't wait. I love all of the characters. The magic system is unbelievable. It's all based on colors and certain people who are able to draft or kind of take and absorb colors that surround them and turn it into a power that they can utilize in fights and such. It's so cool you guys. I love love this world and I just can't wait to see where our characters go from here because the ending of the first book oh my gosh such a cliffhanger the next book is another like favorite favorite fantasy it's right there and it's the sequel to Foundry Side which is Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett the first book again unbelievable again one of my new favorites I loved the characters. I loved the magic system. If you can't tell, there's a pattern here. If you create really fun characters and a really cool magic system, I'm probably gonna lo really love your book. So I am so excited. People have told me that this book is somehow just as good, if not better, than the first one. And again, I'm like, how? So I'm so excited to get to Shorefall. Oh my goodness. I have a full review of Foundry Side, so if you wanna check out more about it, which Oh my gosh, please pick up this book if you want a really fun fantasy adventure. Um, I will link that review down below. Next book is a sequel to a young adult fantasy that I read recently, and that is Heart of Flames, which is the sequel to Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto. I really enjoyed the first one. It wasn't perfect, but I liked where it ended, and I can see our characters kind of getting a little more depth in the second one based off of the ending of the first one, and that was kind of my biggest gripe with the first was the the, the characters and just not getting a whole lot of depth. They, they came off as kind of generic, but it kind of changed towards the end. So I'm very intrigued and I really liked the world and the magic. It all had to do with like Phoenix Riders and some people have this animal magic where they can t talk to animals and kind of control them. So it was a really cool world, tons of potential. So I'm really excited to see where it goes. This book is humongous. Can we just talk about how big this book is? Like, what is that? All right. I don't even know if we're halfway yet. This is, this is absurd. Wow, this is just absurd, Jesse. You just need to stop buying books. Next book I have is Gunslinger by Stephen King. This is his first book in his epic fantasy series, The Dark Tower. I believe it's seven books in total. I don't know much at all about it, but I just, really, really have enjoyed all of the Stephen King books that I've read so far. Really like his character work. I like his writing style. So I've been so intrigued to pick up his fantasy series for so long. I've heard mixed reviews on it. Some people think it's like a classic, quintessential fantasy. Some people don't like it as much. So I'm curious to see where I fall on this and if I will end up enjoying this. I have high hopes. And it's really teeny, so hopefully I can get through it pretty quick. The next book I have, I haven't heard anyone talk about this book, but I was so intrigued by the cover and the title, and that is The Girl Who Could Move Shit With Her Mind by Jackson Ford. Look at this cover with all of like the random shit flying around on it. I love that. So the premise, it says that it's a cross between Alias and X-Men. And then when I read the summary, it reminded me so much of Jessica Jones. So all of those things combined, I'm so intrigued. Uh, it says that Tegan Frost is having a hard time keeping it together. Sure, she's got telekinetic powers, a skill that the government is all too happy to make use of, sending her on secret break-in missions that no ordinary human could carry out. But all she really wants to do is kick back, have a beer, and pretend she's normal for once. So I just, again, like kind of with Murderbot, I really like these reluctant, powerful people or beings that just really just want to to have a normal life and can't and I love that so I'm really really excited for this one and hopefully I enjoy it because again I don't see anyone talking about this so it would be fun to find like a hidden gem on the booktube community the next book I have I'm I'm finally doing it I'm finally reading N.K. Jemisin's The Fifth Season I have heard amazing amazing things about this book I don't know much about it I believe it's about a, a world where it keeps having like apocalyptic events happen where the world kind of has to start over but then I think this book follows like the last time the world's gonna end so I think it's kind of a, a dystopian maybe a little sci-fi fantasy 
action going on here. I've heard the writing is stunning. I, this is on like every top fantasy list that you find online. So I'm just really excited to finally see what all the hype is about with N.K. Jemisin and get into this series. And the next book I have was actually the July book club pick for my sci-fi fantasy book club, and that is Malice by John Gwynn. This is such a big book. I did not realize it was this large when Jashana and I chose this book for the book club. So if you have been intimidated to pick up this series and have been putting it off because it's kind of intimidating, maybe this is the push you need to read it with the book club to finally get around to it because I've heard amazing things about this series. It's just a little intimidating. So I'm really excited. I'm also a little <laughs> hesitant because it's just so big. But but I, I've heard amazing things, so I, I can't wait to get to it. And I, I really don't know too much about it. Um, I just know that it's epic, adult, high fantasy, so count me in. I also have The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Another one that I've heard amazing things about. This is Evan Winter's debut fantasy book, and it has incredible ratings and reviews out there. This is a military fantasy, so I don't know much about it. I believe it follows this world where one in 2,000 women have the power to call down dragons, and one in 100 men have like an unheard of like strength or are better in battle or something like that. So I'm really, really curious to see what all the hype is about with this one. And I believe the second book comes out next month. So if I really, really love it, I can just go ahead and read the next one. And then here is like a classic young adult fantasy that I never got around to reading, and that is The Demon King by Cinda Williams Trima. This is the first book in the Seven Realms series, and I've heard so many people rave about Cinda Williams Trima's writing, so I'm really excited to finally be getting around to this like classic young adult fantasy series. It's pretty old at this point and there's even like a spin-off series now but at least if I enjoy it I can just binge all of the books at once so that's a plus to getting around to things really late. <laughs> the next three books I got off of Book Depository because the UK editions of them are so stunning. These might be some of my favorite covers that I own in my collection. The first being another young adult fantasy that is Japanese inspired and it is Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. Anything Japanese inspired, I'm going to automatically pick up because if you didn't know, I've mentioned this in a couple of videos, but I used to live in Japan for seven years and I loved it. That was like the best experience of my entire life. I would go back in a heartbeat. So anything Japanese inspired is just like perfect for me. I love it. And this cover is the most stunning cover. I think it's beautiful. It just like speaks to my soul. It's so pretty. And I've heard amazing things about this series, so I can't wait to get to it. I also got Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on it. It's one of those series that pops up on all of the like top fantasy series of all time lists that you see online, so I feel like I just have to give it a chance. I've heard amazing things about Robin Hobb's writing. Um, again, I think this is more of like a coming of age tale, and so I'm, I'm going in with lower expectations, but I still am excited to get to it, if that makes sense. And I love this cover. <laughs> I'm really excited. If I, I hope I like them because I would love to have like all the books lined up and just all these spines facing you guys. It would be so pretty. And this, this one might be the most beautiful book I own. Uh, okay, here we go. <sighs> Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. Look how shiny that is, you guys. So I never read his Dark Materials growing up. That was just one that I, I never picked up. I don't know why, but I've heard amazing things. It's like classic middle grade of fantasy that everyone reads and loves growing up. I've seen some of the HBO show that's based off of this series and I really enjoyed it, but then I stopped watching it because I was like, no, I want to read the books before I continue on. And when I saw these editions, I couldn't help myself. They're, they're only like 10 bucks each on Book Depository. So if you want this stunning edition in your collection, definitely go check it out. Um, I am so obsessed with these covers and I'm I'm really excited to finally see what his Dark Materials is all about and be in on the conversation that takes place around this book. I'm just gonna leave that up for you just for a second. Oh, so pretty. Speaking of pretty books, <laughs> so I recently read Uprooted by Naomi Novik and I was eh, 
about it. Um, I really liked the writing. I thought it was really, really beautiful writing. But for some reason, just like the plot and kind of where the direction went for the plot and the characters and all that just didn't really connect with me. I didn't love it. Um, but I've heard that her other standalone, Spinning Silver, is much better. A lot of people prefer Spinning Silver. And I got this edition <laughs> off of Book Depository. It is so beautiful. Like, have you, oh, these books are so stunning. I just really love beautiful books. I believe this is kind of a fairy tale retelling of Rumpelstiltskin. Don't quote me on that. I'm just so excited because again, I saw so much potential in Naomi Novik's writing in Uprooted and I did like that book, but I just didn't love it. So hopefully Spinning Silver really connects with me. This is the book haul that never ends, you guys. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I need to stop buying books. Okay, so the next couple um, are again sequels. So I picked up Grey Sister and Holy Sister, the sequels to Red Sister by Mark Lawrence because I did enjoy Red Sister. I didn't love it, but I see a lot of potential in it. So I'm really excited to continue on with the series. I just started Grey Sister and I'm already really enjoying it. So hopefully I love the rest of the series. Just these covers. Again, I just love beautiful books oh my god i also got the sequel to the blade itself which is before they are hanged by joe abercrombie the blade itself i have a complicated relationship with because i read it a couple years ago and i didn't love it i thought it was a little too character driven for me there was just really no plot but i wanted to give it another chance because so many people rave about joe abercrombie on this community so i gave it another chance and i listened to it on audiobook this time and i think that was the difference maker for me the narrator for the audiobook for these books he is so amazing he is able to give every character in this series a completely different voice. He just has the most amazing way of bringing the story to life and the characters to life. I totally loved it. So I think that I'll continue to pick up the audiobooks for this series as well as kind of reading along physically because that is the way that I've really been able to connect with the story and the characters. I mean, Glockta is just the best character ever. So I can't wait to see where this story goes and where these characters go. The next book, I, I really don't know what this is about, but I've seen a couple people talk about it and enjoy it. Child of a Mad God by R.A. Salvatore. I am such a bad booktuber, you guys. I, I don't I don't know what this is about. The summary on the back's too long. I don't, I don't know. I just like watch so many booktube videos and then just add to my cart if they sound good in the moment. And then I forget what they're about. And I just, I'll let you guys know what I think when I get around to it. This one, I have heard so, so many people rave about and so many of you have asked me to read it. The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I'm gonna do it. I'm finally gonna get around to reading this. So much hype is built around this series right now in this community and <laughs> I'm so excited to get to it. So I believe this is more of a military fantasy that follows an actual war that happened, but is kind of a fantasy spin on that war and is supposed to examine just the really gory, horrible details of war and not kind of glorify it. So I'm really curious to see how I like this. I've heard a couple people not love it, but I don't know. I'm just really curious to see what all the hype is about, what all the discussion is about. And I think that the last book comes out later this year. So if I can manage to read this one and then the Dragon Republic and read the last book with like everybody else, that would be perfect. Oh my God, we're almost there, you guys. <laughs> This has been the longest haul ever. Okay, the next book I have is another one that is so unbelievably hyped right now. It's The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wong. I believe this was self-published and just took the booktube community by storm. And I don't think I've seen one review of this that's less than five stars. Everyone seems to be loving this book and I have major FOMO right now. So I just really, really need to get to this book. I believe it's a standalone. So that's awesome. You don't have to invest your time in this huge series. So I'm really, really excited to get to this and be a part of the conversation that's going on right now around it because my Lord, you guys are loving this book. The next two books I have are again, sequels to 
a book that I read recently called The Tiger's Daughter, and that is The Phoenix Empress and the Warrior Moon by Kay Arsenal Rivera. Tiger's Daughter really took me by surprise. I didn't know anything about it going into it, but then when I found out it was like this Asian-inspired fantasy world about these two kind of warrior women who control different types of like clans and they end up like befriending each other and kind of it's this whole coming of age story and this beautiful love story between these two warrior women it's really cool so i really really enjoyed it and it was one of the most beautifully written books i think i've read in a very long time and most of it was told from second person but for some reason it just totally worked for me i really really enjoyed it so i'm really excited to see where this series goes and where these characters go because now they're kind of they've come of age and we're like ready to start really exploring their adult life and I'm super excited for it so can't recommend Tiger's Daughter enough excited to continue on last book the last one you guys we made it so the last book I have is The Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan this is a bind up I believe of the first three two three two it's a bind up of the first couple books in the Ryria Revelations. Ryria. Ryria. Ry. Oh my god. I can't, I can't say that word. I need to go back and watch. I've seen people pronounce this correctly on YouTube and I'm like, wait, say it one more time. What is it? Ryria. Wow, I sound horrible trying to pronounce that. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited for this one. I think it's similar to Kings of the Wild. Don't quote me on that. I feel like I've heard someone say that, which I'm really enjoying Queen Kings of the Wild. So I'm very intrigued by this. I've heard amazing things about Michael J. Sullivan in general. So again, this is one of those epic fantasy series that just seems to be one of the ones that you just gotta read if you're a fantasy reader. And I'm just trying to catch up on all of the popular series that I should have read like years ago. And I'm just now getting around to. We made it to the end. That is the end of this book haul. I have another book haul that's coming up that's all my books outside of sci-fi fantasy books and I I just need to stop buying books what am I doing why why do I keep buying more books so thank you all so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe I release new videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday and until next time bye